The elected office we want to start talking about today is not the first congressional district that you're running for, but the state senate seat in District 21. All right. Uh, that's the one vacated by uh, Kent Cravens, and it's a solidly Republican seat. As Bernalillo County Commissioner, you nominated and appointed a Democrat, uh, Lisa Curtis, to replace him. How does that reflect the will of the voters in that district? Well, I think we have to see, don't we? Those voters are going to get a chance to either elect Lisa Curtis or some other candidate of their choice. I think it's a bit premature to determine exactly what those voters want. What I was looking for was someone with high qualifications, somebody who represented that they were talking to the voters of their district. That was very meaningful and important to me. And I wish her great success, and it's clear to me this is someone who really wants to run and represent that district and I think she's got the, we ought to give her the opportunity to do that and I also felt strongly about supporting our sister county Sandoval County in that regard. You guys weren't just poking a stick at the governor there by sending her a, a you know, Democrat. There were plenty of other things that uh, we could do that. No, we want, we really intend, this is a very professional body. I'm actually very impressed by the county commission. You know, when I was in state government, we gave lots of monies to county, and I really was never clear about the, the commission and the policy making aspect. And I'll tell you, it's a tough job, it's a meaningful job, and I, I, we really want, there was some great qualified candidates and that's what we want to see. We want folks before us, we want to make decisions about professionalism, accountability and transparency. I felt good about it. What do you think is the, the most important thing that you've accomplished on the commission? You know, that's a tough question because we've done some great stuff. I think the accountability, the new leadership, the transparency in government is long overdue, and I can tell you that my constituents are very grateful. But I also feel strongly about the important work that we're doing in health care, and we're looking at behavioral health and improving the corrections system. Um, I think that uh, this whole new leadership professionalism aspect is making a difference for constituents every day. Is there one specific uh, vote or one specific thing that you've done? Well, there are several, but I'll tell you that uh, something that's really important to me is the work that we're doing to protect uh, pregnant women and their children and make sure that their behavioral health and drug addiction treatment continues. And I'm really proud of that work. And it's also work that's not specific to my district. And the reason I think that is useful and uh, critical is it's an indication that we are working together to solve the problems that people have every day in this county. And uh, I feel great about that. Let's talk about a couple other local issues. Do you support Mayor Barry's plan to uh, pour money into the Paseo interchange there on I-25? Well, I might disagree with you about pouring of money. I think it's important that we've got leadership at the city recognizing that Paseo is a major transportation segue between the east and the western parts of the city and the county has to get fixed. I mean, quite frankly, it's a public safety issue as well as a transportation dynamic that needs to get resolved. What I worry about is why we aren't spending that money right now. We need the money for jobs. I think that we could do the planning and do it a segment at a time, and I believe that you can do that without over overspending. I mean, one of the arguments for um, starting and then waiting and starting and waiting is that it costs more. If you do it right, and there are plenty of fabulous planners who can show us how to do that, we can start and make sure that we're improving the public safety aspects right now. Speaking of public safety, we have this fuel spill over at Kirtland. It's not cleaned up. Uh, if you are elected to Congress, what would you do to make that happen? Uh, I would uh, have a uh, whole speed this process up. I mean, one, and I, I'm not a scientist, and I've gotten lots of information. Uh, there's lots of concern that the technology that we use for testing a decade it was insufficient to identify where where we have water quality issues, and of course that plume is spreading. For me, while we're monitoring, I, I want to see as much action towards cleaning up that site, and I think Congress has got to have more accountability and more dedicated revenues for that particular site. I think it's very important. And I, I'm, I'm, uh, I feel good about the county and the water authority's involvement here, but alone it's insufficient to protect the citizens here, and I think Congress has got to take a more direct role. Last time you ran for this seat, you ran against Martin Heinrich uh, and Rebecca Vigil Huron, and, and you finished last among those three. What lesson do you take away from, from that finish? 
spend more time with the voters. I mean, that's the thing I love the best, right, is meeting with folks, getting involved in your community. But elections are tough, and being a candidate is tough, and it's very easy to get inside the professional aspects of the campaign itself and forget that the people that you, you want to impress, that you, whose votes that you are um, working to earn, that you got to get out and meet them. And that's a lesson I learned and in my county commission race, where I had a very healthy win in both a uh, contested difficult primary and in the general. Um, I took that lesson with me and I was out in the community um, a lot, every day. And I'll do the same thing in this campaign. How do you think Heinrich uh, has been doing? His, you know, I think I, I have to say something really wonderful about Congressman Heinrich is that he, he involved me in his general election, which I, I thought was uh, very um, appropriate and warm because it's a partnership about the issues that we care about. Two, he engaged me as a congressman, and I appreciate that as well. Uh, I think that he uh, worked hard on some community health and public health issues. He's strong on behavioral health, and I think if you look at some of the health issues, uh, particularly in Bernalillo County, that's very important work, and I think uh, uh, he's done a good job, and I wish him well in uh, this contest. How do you think you could do uh, better? What, what things do you think you could improve upon that, uh, that he's done? Well, you know, I, I'm, I don't know that I'm going to say improve, but maybe a little bit different. Um, something that I uh, think is really critical, particularly now with the issues that we're facing, is we need more folks on the ground, more constituent services and more advocacy. So while we have these debates in Washington that I think paralyze any opportunity to really move the economy forward, to deal with education reform, to deal with uh, um, health care reform, and a multitude of other critical issues issues. You need folks on the ground who are advocating here with the legislature and local bodies of government who are working with constituents in a much broader capacity and potentially not just in your district but looking at statewide efforts that improve the economy. That's something that I'm going to do as a congresswoman that I don't think has been done before. Hmm. What, you know, what do you think makes you different and better than your primary opponents? Well, you know, uh, I have a pretty diverse experience. I'm, I'm a newly elected official. Um, I've got more than 20 years fighting and being a champion for vulnerable populations. Um, I'm a businesswoman, so I know what it's like to have to make the payroll every month. I'm a widow. I was a caregiver for my father, and I'm a current caregiver for my mother, and a single mother of two lovely children. Uh, that makes me uniquely qualified, both professionally and personally, because I'm facing the issues that people are struggling with each and every day, and I think those unique qualifications make you better are apt at representing and changing and solving problems at a national level. I think the guys were surprised by how much money you raised. You, you raked in quite a haul um, and it was an impressive showing for so early in the campaign. How do you think you can keep that up? Well, make no mistake, it's very difficult, particularly in these economic times. But you know, I'm tenacious. I think I've got a very solid record. I think people know that. I've recognized as somebody who will work to celebrate solutions. And I think folks are ready to invest in that. And I have to say, I'm very proud of that fundraising effort, and I'm grateful to the folks who have invested in me. Griego told us that he uh, you know, had to raise a lot of his money out of state because there's just a limited pot here. Are you raising money out of state as well? Uh, of course, but I will, I'm also really proud of the fact that the bulk of the investments for me are from folks here and from this district who are investing in my race, in my campaign, in my candidacy. Do you think we need more women in Congress? I do unequivocally. You know, we set standards when we're setting up democracies, and it's not enough. But the standard that we set around the world is that at least 25 percent of that policy making and leadership should be women. And yet 17 percent is what we have in Congress today. In the last election cycle, in fact, we lost uh, positions for women. And another dynamic, we have very few um, women of color. And I think it's really critical that if you're going to represent those issues, that we're going to raise folks out of poverty, that we're going to recognize the unique women, uh, the, the unique issues that women face, you have to have more representation by women in these leadership positions. Which women in Congress do you admire? You know, there's a ton. Um, something that's uh, near and dear to my heart, though, is uh, Congresswoman Gifford. She embodies for me um, 
such incredible strength, that kind of tenacity, that commitment to public service in the face of incredible obstacles. Um, that's the kind of reputation that I want. Nothing gets you down, you move forward, you're focused on your constituents, uh, and uh, that's really important. And there are some, there are, and I think that there are incredible women. I mean, Elizabeth Warren, there are some incredible women and great role models, and I hope to join those ranks very soon. Why do you think it's important that you should be there as a Democratic woman? You know, I, being a Democrat has been very important to me just because of the social justice issues, which I also think fall to women in a more significant way. You know, we're raising our children, we're caring for our elderly parents, we are in the workforce, we're often the last line of defense uh, between having any income in the family. We're trying to figure out how to keep our kids safe and in school. Um, those are the kinds of issues that Americans are facing, that New Mexicans are facing every day. That perspective by women, caregiving, working, managing the household, trying to figure out how to make ends meet, um, I would say that those are the issues that Congress needs to start paying attention to. It's those folks and it's those issues. And I think women can represent them because they live them. If you win this primary, say your opponent in the general is Janice Arnold Jones, how will you convince voters that you're the better candidate in the general? Well, for number one is that I put people before politics, and that sounds, I have a lot of respect for um, the former representative, but I'm focused on those vulnerable, those communities who are disadvantaged, who haven't had a voice, and I want to represent those folks. I think that's going to be a major difference between the Democratic candidates and the Republican candidates, very focused on making sure that there is more attention to working families and the middle class, and less on special interests and corporate powers and I think those are still going to be very important dividing lines between the two parties and you know, I think that if we don't deal with that you can't move the economy forward and bring jobs in the way that is meaningful and sustainable. You know this week we had some news of another federal investigation into Bill Richardson and some fundraising activities. Uh, you were his Secretary of Health and worked with him for a number of years. Do you think you'll feel the need to distance yourself from him, especially if you get into the general? You know, I worked for three governors, and I think that folks remember that, that I worked in a bipartisan, 17-year appointed environment, and I probably should check this fact, but I don't think anybody else has ever done that. And I did that because I was very focused on serving my constituents and not allowing special interests or politics to erode that dedicated core work. And I think that's the reputation that gets me into Congress through the general. You know, being um, a secretary, a cabinet secretary is a very different kind of role from being a member, uh, one of hundreds in the House of Representatives. How do you think you'll have to adjust your working style to make a name for yourself in that body? You know, honestly, it is different. You know, I'm in a legislative body or a legislative position now as a county commissioner, and absolutely it's different than being the executive manager and policy setter in that regard. But the way I'm going to operate differently is in earlier in our interview, we talked about the people I would have here on the ground. You know, while you're working on these very looming large problems on the Beltway, you better find a way to come back here at home and solve the problems here that your constituents are facing because they can't wait another single minute. And that's the kind of work that I did as a cabinet secretary. And that's the kind of work that I'll take to Washington. I think it's a combination. I think we try too hard to be all of one and none of the other. Let's right size that effort. And that's how I'll be different in Congress. In terms of listening to you know, what fo folks are thinking right now, is there a message that you take away from the Occupy Wall Street protests? Absolutely, and I can really relate that to health care. You know, I do pro bono health care navigation every day for individuals who still have my cell phone number from my cabinet secretary and advocacy days. And by the time they reach me, they are frustrated and exhausted and believe that they have nowhere else to go. They've lost their benefits. They're about to lose their house. They have to have surgery. They can't afford their medication. And when you reach that level of frustration, you need somebody to pay attention. And I think it's it's a very important, resounding message across the country. People are at the end 
of their ropes. And they don't believe that any of us are taking that seriously. And I think that that's important for the rest of the country and the world to see that it's time that we focus domestically, spend our resources here, lift people out of poverty in the United States, create jobs, have more American-made products, and really pay attention to the problems that are here. And that's really, I think, how we help the rest of the world. It's by focusing on the people who can't wait not one more day for our efforts to improve their qualities of life. Michelle Lujan Grisham, oh, thank, thank you. you for being with Absolutely, us today. Absolutely, Gwyneth, thank you. I think taking yeah. money out of politics is a good thing. I mean, I think the voters overwhelmingly agree that, that, that it's necessary. I mean, it passed in 2005 in Albuquerque mm -hmm. by almost 70% and in mm -hmm. Santa Fe, nearly 65%. So I think we need to listen to the voters on this one. Mm -hmm. What's the downside Work for the PRC. I mean, it cleaned it up really well. I mean, Jerome Block is a perfect <laughs> hey. example of what happens when you have that money in there.